So the, here we go. The classic solution that we think about is a liquid and a solid. And we think about putting that solid into the liquid and it breaks up into smaller chunks of itself. And it gets evenly distributed throughout the liquid. And that's our solution. And in that case, we would say that this liquid dissolved this solid. And dissolving is where we take the little, the solid and the pieces break apart, they become smaller, not down to the atomic or molecular level usually, but smaller chunks that are evenly distributed in the liquid. In this case, so in, in the case for all solutions, the big key is that they're a homogeneous mixture, okay, and they stay dissolved. If you make Kool-Aid at home and you stir it all up and you stick it in the fridge and you go away for a week, when you come back, is it still mixed? Does it still taste like Kool-Aid? Yeah. Has it separated into a layer of sugar and a layer of purple coloring and a layer of clear water? It shouldn't have if you are making Kool-Aid correctly. Um, so that, so we talk about, we talk about solubility. This solid obviously is soluble in this liquid. That's an important distinction. We always have to specify the liquid that we're talking about. Okay? Not all substances are soluble in all other substances. So, sugar is very soluble in water. Are there things that we could put in our Kool-Aid that would not dissolve? Yes. What if you stir in a half a cup of iron filings into your Kool-Aid? Will they dissolve? No. They will not, and you are making Kool-Aid wrong. Um, if you put sawdust in your Kool-Aid, will it dissolve? No. Now, are there substances that we could dissolve iron filings in? Yes. There are a whole number of acids that would easily dissolve those iron filings, but water isn't going to do it. So we always, when we talk about solubility, we have to talk about it's a, it's a two-way street. It's a two-person dance. Um, is this substance soluble in this substance? And when we dissolve things, we said that they, they leave their solid and end up distributed throughout. It is, by definition, it's a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances that are in a single phase. So we've got these things mixed together. They're homogeneous, which means they're distributed evenly, and they're in a single phase. Okay, questions on that stuff. It's pretty easy. When we talk about any solution, and I'm going to give you again our little classic example of a liquid with a solid dissolved in it. This could be our Kool-Aid from the last slide. In this classic liquid solid solution, we typically think the liquid is the solvent. Okay? So the solvent is the thing that does the dissolving. And if you work around cars at all, you're probably pretty familiar with a bunch of different solvents. Um, if you've got grease on your hands, will water take it off? Will water dissolve the grease? No. But gasoline will, or Gojo, those are solvents. They will dissolve the grease. Um, if you have somehow gotten a crust of salt all over your hands, I don't know, I don't know what you people do, um, will water dissolve that salt? Yes, water dissolves salt very nicely. And the thing that's being dissolved is the solute. Okay? Now, this works as a definition as long as we're talking about the classic old liquid and solid solution. Sometimes we can have a solution that is not a liquid and a solid. So we can have a solution that is made up of a bunch of gases. Can you identify right now, anywhere in this room, a solution made up of a mixture of gases? Are you touching it? Yes. You're sitting in it. You're sitting in it. It's all around you. So the air is a combination of gases. Well, what's the solvent? What's the solute? How do you answer that when you don't have your old classic, here's my water, here's my sugar. I mix them together, the sugar dissolves in the water. When you've got, so I'm going to symbolize our mixture of gases with a little puffy cloud. 
it in a solution that is comprised of gases or solids we tend to think of the thing that has the greater number of moles the greater amount is the solvent so if we have 100 liters of O2 and we add to that 5 liters of CO2 we would call the CO2 the solute we would call the O2 the solvent. So in cases where it's not a, a liquid solid sort of classical solution that's how we think about that. Now um, we can also have solid solutions which we'll talk about in a second and you guys have all probably handled solid solutions. Okay, solutions can be gas, liquid, or solid phase. Um, once something is put into solution, in order to classify it as a solution, it has to remain dissolved. It can't come out of solution on its own. So, like I said, if you're making your Kool-Aid wrong, and you come back next week, and you've got a layer of sugar at the bottom, and then a layer of purple coloring, and then a layer of clear water, that's not, it was not a solution. It's not remaining dissolved. So one of the big classes of solutions that we talk about is alloys. Are you familiar with the term bronze? Do you know what bronze is? What's bronze? It's... Okay, so at some point in human history... <laughs> okay, I was going to say, we've got somebody who can address a lot of this. This is good. The Bronze Age. Um, so prior to humans using metals, their tools were made of what? Stone, bone, and wood. And we call the period of human civilization in which people were using stone tools the Stone Age. Yeah, and we have the Old Stone Age and the New Stone Age, the Neolithic and the Paleolithic and all that. It gets complicated. But at some point, humans figured out that there were some metals that they could obtain from the crust, and they could actually melt at temperatures that were attainable by them, burning charcoal, in essence. And so what's interesting is when you take two metals and you melt them down and you mix them together very often the result has got characteristics that are slightly different than either of the parent metals and often superior. So you guys have all handled copper, right? Do you think you could chop down a tree with copper? It's too soft. Yeah, it's very soft. You would, you would never be able to chop something down with a copper axe head. However, if you melt copper and you melt tin and you mix them together, you can actually forge something. And this is bronze. Some of you already knew this. It's bronze, and bronze is, bronze is hard enough to do some things that neither copper nor tin can. So in a sample of bronze, you actually have copper and zinc ions all mixed together. Oops, is that hard to read? Yeah. Okay, let me enlarge this. Okay, so there's our bronze, and within that bronze, you have a mixture of copper and zinc atoms. Oh gosh, it's not zinc, I'm sorry. It's tin, my apologies. You have a mixture of copper and tin atoms, is that better, is that more understandable? Okay, yeah, copper and zinc gives you brass, not bronze, my apologies. Okay, so when, when you melt the two, mix them together, and let them cool, you have something that now has got characteristics different than either of its parent materials. It's called an alloy, and most of you, if you're wearing any kind of jewelry at all, it's made of an alloy. Um, we don't typically make jewelry of pure silver or pure gold. We make them of alloys, so 14 karat gold is an alloy of gold, I think gold and copper, it says in your notes, yeah. Uh, oh, gold and silver, 14 karat. Um, sterling silver is silver and copper. So, you know how a cheap silver ring will turn your finger green? It means that there's a, a copper base under a very thin coating of sterling silver, which is the, the copper silver alloy. Well, stainless steel. Um, stainless steel is an alloy, yeah, steel is an alloy of a number of things. I don't remember all the things that are in steel. Well, there's it's carbon, there's iron. It's because the, the three things on the Steelers helmet represent the three ingredients for yeah. steel. Nickel, 
Nickel's more of a boom. Okay, so nickel, iron, and, and carbon. 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 High carbon steel. Because I, I remember reading that that's what the three Yeah, three high carbon steel. Example. So that would be it. Um, an alloy is just a solution, a solid solution of metals. It's a solid solution of metals. And alloys are, are, are really pretty ubiquitous in our lives. We're surrounded by alloys. Um, pewter is another one. Now, lead. What do you know about lead? Um, it's not very good for you. Now, most of you are, are, past, are past the period of highest risk. Um, in terms of lead exposure in children, it's not a maybe, it's not a what if, it's not an anything. It will lower their IQ, period. End of sentence. Lead exposure in children lowers IQ, period. There is no debate. It's a straight line drop. It's, it's a serious thing. Um, so we don't want to expose children, pregnant women, to lead. It's not great for any of us for other reasons, but in terms of the, the biggest developmental issues, those happen in, in smaller children. So you want to avoid lead exposure with kids. Um, but for a lot of human history, so 10,000 years ago, people did not have the technology to melt iron. Iron... Iron takes some heat. I may be wrong on my, on my dateline for Iron Age, but we'll, we'll fudge the numbers for today. Um, so long before we could generate enough heat to melt iron, we could generate enough heat to melt copper and tin. They melt at lower temperatures. Lead melts very nicely. And so lead mixed with tin and sometimes with copper produces an alloy called pewter. So true pewter has got a lead content. People used to eat off pewter dishes and eat with pewter utensils. Um, now, again, for adults, there are risks, but not like the risks for children. Um, so these are, these are all alloys that we've used over human history. And actually, yeah, a lot of the, age, sort of the ages of civilization are named for the allies that were in the alloys that were in most common use. So, um, you know. All right. That's solid solutions. Now, what if we have a liquid? That's my best attempt to draw a pop bottle. What if we have a liquid and we dissolve a gas in it? Can we do that? Yes. Okay. What kind of gas is commonly dissolved in liquid? Which is what gas? Carbon, yeah, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. So when we take that liquid and we dissolve, we're drawing little bubbles of CO2 in our gas here, and we dissolve that CO2, the question I have for you is, what form is that CO2 in? So this is a liquid, which is all, and, and the liquid is already a solution of sugar, artificial coloring, caffeine, all these other chemicals. Liquid plus dissolved CO2. What phase is that CO2 in? When the, when the pop bottle is sitting on the store shelf. Ah! So, at least one of you argues that the CO2 is in a liquid form. Is that possible? Can you make, can you make CO2 a liquid? It's on, it's on, it's on, it's on the phase chart. It is on the phase chart. Exactly the answer I was hoping for. Um, yeah, it's a liquid. I'm curious what that looks like. What, well, you see it all the time. Go buy a bottle of pop. How could you possibly get that CO2 to be a liquid at room temperature? High pressure. Those pop bottles are built to withstand a lot of pressure. When you crack the pop bottle, what do you hear? Psst, you're depressurizing the system. What happens when you depressurize the system? It comes to the surface in the form of bubbles. It, as the pressure drops, the CO2 starts to come out of solution. Those bubbles in your pop are the CO2 coming out of solution. If you leave your pop bottle sitting open in a nice warm room overnight, what happens? It goes flat, which means what? What has happened? All the CO2 has come out of solution. 
that CO2 has outgassed and has escaped into the environment. If you keep your pop colder, is it going to lose more or less of the CO2? I mean, you know this from experience. It's going to lose less because at lower temperatures, it's easier to keep that CO2 in solution as a liquid. Does that make sense? And that kind of gets to the idea that um, the, whoops, that a solution um, has to be two things in the same phase. That's where we're going to stop for today. So.